Namaste. Good morning. <laughs> Recently, I've been just sticking to these sharings that uh, what's going on right now and what's crossed my mind and what I'm dealing with in the hopes that uh, some of you can relate. If not now, maybe later. <laughs> or better than if not now, when? <laughs> I like that. But today I'm calling it uh, living with one foot in each world. I really just shorten it one foot in each world. Because uh, by all rights, by tradition, I would be sequestered. I would be in a monastery somewhere, in a cave, preferably in the Himalayas, you know, depending on the kind villagers to bring me my gruel, <laughs> my minimum requirement to keep the body alive. The, the beauty of the people in the villages below, they climb up the stairs and feed the acolyte, feed the seekers, feed the masters, feed those that have recluse themselves from the world. And this just still happening, but it's not the prevalent, it's not the wave of the future. And if anything, uh, I'm more about reflecting the future than reflecting the past, even though equal, they're equally <laughs> not real, but you know, the future for me is a lot closer than the past and the traditional way of doing things. First of all, uh, I said a long time ago that the monks, the Buddhists of the future would all be married. I'm married. Sadhguru was married. His wife unfortunately passed away. Adyashanti is married. And I believe, uh, I'm not sure, but Toll, Eckhart Toll, is, is married, I believe. But anyway, this is the way of the future. So if you're going to maintain a relationship, no matter how enlightened your partner is, you're going to have to function in this world. That's what I mean with one foot in each world. Have to function, have to breathe, have to survive, have to deal with all the. Should I say, dare I say, unpleasantries? <laughs> or just simply all the occurrences that daily life brings, neighbors and greeting people, and uh, even to the point of uh, concern, uh, intimate concern. Instead of concern from a distance, it's easier to be on a mountain looking down and saying, yeah, I'm sending my love to the masses, the huddle of masses below. <laughs> I'm embracing them. I'm seeing their commonalities. I'm seeing our equality. I'm seeing their progress or lack thereof. But I'm seeing that they're destined toward the same things that I've been blessed with. But that's so far. Now I'm down amongst the... <laughs> down amongst... As much as I try to be reclusive, <laughs> I still have to function in the daily world. And... It's, it's the price I'm more than willing to pay to have a beautiful partner, to live in a nice house, To sit on the throne, I'm talking about the uh, toilet, of course, you know. To sit on the throne compared to squatting over a hole. These kind of things are the optics, the, this is what comes with living in society. And trust me, the older you get, the more important your morning uh, constitutional becomes. <laughs> but pardon me for, this is what I'm talking about. This is the real world. This is about that foot 
And then there's the other food that's in the otherworldly, you know, like, <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's much, I'm much more comfortable there, I'm much more relaxed there, I'm much more at home as a, uh, in the other world, the other realms, the realm beyond, the veil. But I'm straddling. And there was a period of time in the last mm, several weeks that I felt that my grasp on life was becoming less and less tenuous, that I was just kind of relaxing into the ultimate letting go. I didn't go to the form. Then they go with the body, completely taking that step over into the other world, and the world's beyond, and the beyond, and the beyond, and the never endless beyond. But then I started, you know, exercising more. I ride my bike, taking daily walks, enjoying the park, and all of a sudden I noticed that my grasp on life had been tenuous, but now it was very really solid. I connected to life, and not only connected to life, but the necessity that I stay while straddling, while spending the majority of my time in the other world. I, I still need to come to this world. There's work to be done for me. I'm waiting on a particular soul, you know, to... Uh, for her turn to come. And that's that. So it's necessary to, although not what I would desire, I felt, I felt really peaceful when I had that less, that tenuous relationship to the form to remain alive in this world of Maya illusion that we're kind of have to grow out of. That's here to teach us that we learn for, learn, learn from, that we need to embrace because we need to do what's necessary to maintain. And relationships, even though they've <laughs> gotten fewer and fewer for me, uh, the ones that are left are pretty vital. You know, uh, ones that I just can't willy-nilly uh, leave behind. I can't follow my bliss. Not yet. But you know, you see me smile, and I'm totally 100% okay with this. But I just want to share that how good I felt with the tenuous grip that life was fleeting, that life could, it was perhaps time to move beyond the form into the light realms. And then the opposite is the exercise in feeling the earth below my feet and feeling the connection and vitality, feeling the vitality of life. That's something that shouldn't be overlooked, should be consecrated, should be valued, is the vital vitality, the living force of Mother Earth and her gift to us. She feeds us and clothes us and keeps shelter over our heads. She allows us to progress. <laughs> we, we think of it as progress at least. <laughs> Two steps back, one step forward. This is kind of the, the game of uh, this progress that humanity is talking about. Two steps back, one step forward. But at least it's like it's like treading water. Keep keep your head above the water. And when I speak about water, you know, I'm always my name is the gentle breeze flowing over the ocean, Hai Yang. 
my connection to the ocean and somebody said no matter what if you send, throw an ice cube this an individual throw an ice cube ice cube in the salt water it's going to melt and become the one and that's us that was a good metaphor for us we're ice cubes floating in the ocean and fleeting and temporary and the end game will always be the same won't it will merge with the one and ice cubes are good a good metaphor because you can see through it mostly clear ice you can see through it uh, just as I can see through uh, people that's one of the reasons I don't mix too much and there's a other factor that you have to deal with is you know you absorb people's karma and I have to practice the, the violet consuming flame it needs to be a daily practice the, the violet, violet flaming flaming the consuming the violet consuming flame that a burns clean it burns up the karma that we just get from daily breathing in and breathing out the daily even if we're living life to the minimal requirements we're still collecting karma we still have to have action in this world and or maybe our footprints get lighter and lighter I feel like I walk in the world my path is, I feel the lightness, the lightness of being. But there still is that karma. And of course, the accumulated karma of the world, is, it's almost overwhelming. But when you learn, you have to really work on it, because sometimes, at first it's depressing, and you know, especially when you first awaken it, you're overwhelmed and depressed by the negativity and how simple it really is to change things and how people uh, are blind to that almost or flat out refuse some people to uh, even acknowledge or recognize that uh, the fragility of the ego, the falseness of the ego. It's a hard lesson to learn. And some people are just, and then you get to the point where you say, oh, well, nothing really matters. And that's kind of a protection, right? It's kind of the spiritual ego I told you that pops up that you have to really work on. And, and by surrendering and embracing your ordinariness is the path to working on this spiritual ego that just kind of comes, uh, comes along and sneaks in without you really being aware of it. So you learn to then you start tolerating and, you know, I'm somewhere stuck between tolerating and embracing. <laughs> I'm working on the Heart Sutra. So this is what I wanted to share with you this morning, that foot in each world and vitality and the gifts that we do give and why we should value, we shouldn't just discard this willy-nilly, we should value this blessing and this time in the form and recognize Mother Earth for all that she does for us and know that humanity will all, each and every one, find their way to the realms of ordinariness, to home, the quickest way home or the slow, doesn't matter, the destination's the same.